Nung hinahanda ko po yung mensahin ng Panginoon na nais kong dalhin sa inyong harapan, I do recognize that the message kanina would be a heavy part para sa atin. And so, I have much lighter and maybe joyful message today, not as heavy as this morning, but I believe na dapat kong bigyan ng pansin dahil sa ilang pangyayari. Lately, two of our members got married. I'm praying to the Lord for them and continually remembering them in this early stage ng kanilang marriage which I consider the most important, the most uh, groundbreaking kung saan tutungo talaga yung marriage. The Lord also made me notice that there are now many who are in the membership that are within that range where singles are getting married. Single men, single women in our church. And thirdly, napuna po rin na unti-unti yung mga anak ng mga may asawa ay parang papaalis na sa kanilang poder. And we know that when it happens and the Lord gives us a longer life, babalik tayo dun sa pasimulang sitwasyon na kung saan simula tayong magsama bilang mag-asawa. And alam natin na mayroong specific na kalooban at purpose ang Panginoon. Na dahil sa ilang mga pangyayari, dahil sa mga anak, yung iba hindi masyadong nabigyan ng mabigat na pansin na ma-reach talaga yung goal na yon. And dahil sa mga bagay na yon, I decided at least to give to you what I consider to be the most basic truths that must be embedded when the subject is Christian marriage. Especially sa panahon ngayon na kung ano-ano na ang sumusulpot sa ating kapaligiran patungkol sa marriage at ang masama doon may mga so-called evangelical or even reformed churches that are giving in to what is now commonly accepted na pananaw pagdating sa marriage. What does or where does this place us as Christians? Itong changing times, changing views pagdating sa marriage. If you still remember one of the very first thing that our Lord Jesus Christ taught His disciples when He started this public ministry is as Christians we are to be the salt of the earth. We are to be the light of the world. And what does this mean as we face the current trend on our day na ito yung isang bagay na inaatak ng gusto sa maraming panahon ng nakalipas at unti-unti tila baga nagiging successful sila at ang pinakanalulungkot ay yung makita mo yung professing church hindi naman lahat <coughs> inaabsorb ang mga bagay na yon What should we as Christians be doing in times like this? Philip Graham Riken said, and I quote, isa lang yung sagot niya. Sabi niya, we need the help of God's counter-culture. 
Ano ba yung God's counter culture? Sabi niya, yung church. The church is God's counter culture. Why the church? <clears throat> well, the church, I believe, is supposed to provide the caring community where singleness and marriage can flourish for the glory of God and even for the good of society and the nation. Dapat doon makita, doon manatili ang katotohanan patungkol sa bagay na yun. The church should be the best place to find the greatest resource for singleness and marriage. Because the, the church is the pillar and ground of the truth of God. Again, quoting from Reichen, sabi niya, the basic principles for family life are found in the Bible. The family is a covenant community. Wives are to love their husbands with a kind of submission that God the Son offered God the Father. Husbands are to love their wives with a kind of sacrifice Christ made for the church. Children are to obey their parents. Parents are to nurture their children. So the basic principles of singleness are also found in the Bible. Chastity, contentment, self-sacrifice, and single-hearted devotion to God. Sinasabi niya, the church is the only place where these things can truly exist. The church should be the place where singles and married are thought in this area and where they can easily find models to imitate. Pero dapat i-acknowledge din natin that too many churches today sa maraming mga iglesia din ngayon we find the collapse of the family because the means that God provided are not being used. Hindi po ginagamit. We should live the way people, the people of God live during the days of the New Testament. Prati natin sinasabi, we must be biblical Christians. That as those privileged by the grace of God, we possess an enormous responsibility in this worldwide crisis. The responsibility to be the salt and the light of this world. The responsibility to act as light, to shine brightly. Hindi doon sa sidelines, forefront. Pero kung ang makikita sa families natin, sa mga values natin concerning families are like that of the world, how can that be true? We here at Trinity must see to it that we are attaining mastery over it in order for our light to shine not only amongst us, but most especially to the culture we belong. And so allow me months more to lead you in considering this issue of Christian marriage, a little bit about singleness. But what I wanted to do is merely summarize the most basic teaching of scriptures. And I have laid it in three basic thoughts. Maraming pwedeng sabihin. Maraming pwedeng ituro dahil marami talagang ibinigay na turo ang salita ng Diyos. But, ano yung dapat na hindi natin makaligtaan? Sa anumang antas ng buhay natin, whether we're single, one day married, married for 10, 15 years. Hindi ako nun natin, kaka-celebrate lang ng anniversary ba? No? Ng marriage? No? Inihintay ko kung sino yung una mag-celebrate ng anniversary ng singleness. Bakit marriage lang? At minsan iniisip ko, o baka matanda na ako, meron bang marriage day celebration? Is marriage being celebrated? 
'di ba? Parang merong Mother's Day, Father's Day, Lolo's Day, Lola's Day. But how about marriage? So what are the, th- the three things that you must ground yourself well and later on when you become parents that you should ground your children well? There are three I consider personally most ba- basic. The first is the special relationship to God's personhood. Napakalaga niyan sa atin. The special relationship that the Bible teaches to God's person. God is a person. We are a person. God has personality. We have personality. So Genesis 1.26 and chapter 2.7 the creation of man and woman follows a deliberate decision. A de- definite act on the part of God. Obvious yun sa inyo, alam niyo yun. While chapter 126 affirms the superiority of Adam over all other creatures, chapter 2 verse 7 affirms his inferiority to God. Superior over all other creatures that God created, but inferior to God. And the first thing that strikes us is the repetition of the plural pronouns in reference to God in verse 26. Let us, in our, to our, which was never used in his previous creative works. And the second thing that strikes us is the three times affirmation that God created man twice emphasizing in his image only remember that man was created in God's image in these simple words the writer of Genesis makes it very evident that when God created man he created a creature that was qualitatively different from all other creatures for of no other creatures was said let us make man in our image according to our likeness so that is the first thing that must be well grounded in all of us and in teaching our children it must be clear man is absolutely unique in God's creation and what does it mean that man is made in God's image sabi niya doon our image our likeness ito pong salitang image at ito pong salitang likeness are used synonymously interchangeably and therefore do not refer to two different things. Image means the shadow or outline of a figure while likeness denotes the resemblance of the shadow to the picture or to the figure. So nakukuha nyo. Di ba? Yung image is the shadow the outline of a figure. Likeness denotes to the resemblance of the shadow to that figure. The first human being was not a reproduction of God. He had similarities to God. What these are is not spelled out, but they are those qualities that distinguish man from beast. Di ba, pag binasa mo yung Genesis, hindi siya talaga dinitalye. Ang makukuha mo lang is that man is qualitatively different from this. There are three things that can be considered concerning this image and likeness. Una po, na dapat i-establish nating mabuti ngayon is that God created human beings with soul. 
He was given a godlike capacity of rational thought, intelligent choice, and emotional feeling. Remember that. Pag sinabi mong God created human beings with soul, you are talking about the capacity of rational thought, the capacity for an intelligent choice, and the capacity to have and to receive emotional feelings. Secondly, God created human beings with a body, therefore with a godlike capacity of making and accomplishing something in this material world. Kasi kung soul ka lang, what would you accomplish? Kaya nga, napakalaga nito. And thirdly, God created human being spiritually alive and morally perfect. Therefore, with a capacity of knowing Him and having fellowship with Him. Nakareserve ng gusto yung spiritual side sa ganun nung create tayo. Bakit tayo kinoconsider din sa ganung angulo? Spiritually alive. Kaya nga ang Bible, nung pumasok na yung kasalanan, sinasabi diun, we are spiritually dead. What is it primarily talking about? The capacity of knowing God and having a fellowship with God. And only human beings are given this status. Even angels or other kung meron pang ibang classification sa heavenly beings are made to be what? God's image. Wala sila. You cannot say in God's image din sila. No. Wala. Only human beings are meant to represent God on earth. Bakit ito'y mahalaga sa atin? Kasi sa ngayon, mga dedicated and committed Christians na lang nag-hold nito. Paano mo titignan ang iyong kapwa-tao na sa ngayon ay under the dominion of sin. Nandyan yung dignity ng tao. Ang dignity niya wala sa kayamanan. Wala sa na-achieve niya. At nakikita niyo naman, yung mga Kristiyano, sometimes na naging miyembro ng church, na ganyan yung mentalidad, sila yung parang very insecure. Sila yung very defensive. Kasi masyado lang inisip, lalo na, Ay, ako, no, naranasan niyo yan. Pagsabihin, doon ka sa Trinity. They don't want to go to Trinity. Sabi nila, una, English congregation yan. English ang preaching dyan, English lahat dyan. Hindi, pangalawa, sabi, puro yung professionals dyan. Walang mahirap dyan. Walang matanda dyan. Puro yung professionals dyan. So people are making some, I do not know what kind of judgments na ganun. Eh siyempre, kung papasok ka dyan, diba, high school graduate ka, elementary graduate ka, kaya nga yung ibang matanda, hindi rin tumatagal. Nagkataon lang po na yung congregation namin, nag-start talaga na English. Nagkataon lang yun. Nagkataon din na noong nagkasama-sama kami, mga college na kami. Pati ako. Kaya alo sabay-sabay na graduate. Kasabihin pa nila, naku, matakot ka dyan. Ang mga miyembro niyan, graduate na Mapua or UP. 
Nagkataon lang po yun. Ako po, sa iyo lang. Iyong dulo. Sabi ko, ako sa iyo, eh, ako. Ano bakit tayo matatakot? So, hindi natin may isang tabi no, sa buhay natin, socially, na may pumapasok na nagkakaroon ng ganong mentalidad at naapektuhan ng kanyang pakikitungo sa kanyang kapwa. Kaya nga kinakailangan maging sa pagpapalaki natin sa ating mga anak, yung mga anak natin, minsan hindi natin alam, they value who they are based on their school, based on kung gaano kayaman yung magulang nila, kung anong uri ng kotse meron sila, or what? Hindi natin namamalayan because we are not remembering the basic truths na ngayon kailangan-kailangan kumpara nung unang panahon. Why? Diba? Kaya nga pag tinanong mo, saan ka nag-aaral? Hindi uh, natin pag-usapan yan. Eh, siyempre, kung sa Ateneo. Ah, sa Ateneo. Sa Lasal. Ah, sarap banggitin eh. Sa tunog na lang eh, no? Tunog mayaman. Ang kaya lang natin, kusot mayaman. <laughs> And that is true. Naranasan ko yan. Nung, sina, nung bagong graduate yung anak ko, tinasamahan ko siya mag-apply. Nung sinamahan ko siya, interviewin siya, hindi niya alam yung lugar. Diba? Malaman, saan graduate yung anak mo? O, lasal po. Ha? Lasal din ako. O, pagkatapos na sabi ng anak ko, tinanggap na siya. Diba? So, medyo manghihina ka. No, may bayan. Sa nag-aaral ang isang mong anak, JUSP. Speed, USP, yaman yun. Yaman daw ako. Hindi. Sabi ko, nagkataon lang, piso, nagbabayad akong piso sa USP. Kasi sabi niya, mahal-mahal na tuition. Oo, oh, mahal tuition yun, hindi ko yung kaya. Matado na anak mo. Eh, 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 sisingilin lang ako, piso. Hindi eh. payag ako. Kaya atlet siya. Literally, piso. Pumila ako doon, haba-habang pila. Pagdating ko doon sa bayaran, piso, hawa ko. So you see the way sometimes people think. Na paano ko yung hindi natin alam yung mga young people na tinuturuan natin, hindi natin nagka-ground well sa mga bagay na magkakaroon ng epekto sa lahat ng antas ng buhay. Hindi lamang sa marriage. Paano mo titignan yung ibang tao? Paano ka makikipag-relate sa mga tao na ito? Paano ka gagawa ng decision? You see, lalong-lalo na itong ginawa ng Diyos has been destroyed and marred by sin. The affirmation being made by God is the affirmation of specialness of human being. All human being is special to God. Remember that. Whether you're single, and remain single, or one day, kasi pag single ka naman, kinokonek mo naman yung identity po ng malakas na sa issue ng marriage, hindi ka makapag-asawa. Di ba, minsan, nakikita ko, may nag-post recently this week, hindi ko sasabihin sa'yo, sinabi niya doon, nasa danger zone na daw siya sa pagiging single. Ha? Huh? Huh? Kristiyano, anong danger? Parang may amen pa. No, nasa danger zone na rin siya. Ano bang danger zone ng pagiging single? And so you get some idea that may not be healthy at all. Because kung titignan natin, design na yan ng Diyos. Hindi mo binabase doon yun. Especially kung ma-realize mo what sin made here. Hindi naman sinabi ng Diyos sa creation niya na pag nag-create siya, equal lahat, lahat ganito. Kahit nung perfect. May sinabi ba? Kung gagawa siya ng male at female, pantay-pantay lahat. Hindi rin ako sure. Hindi ko lang. Kung ganun nga mangyayari. Eh, 
Eh, may freedom of choice na po. Gusto nung bata eh, bago siya mapanganak, babae siya. May ganun pa. So, we think about it. We laugh at it sometimes, kung malikot yung isip mo. Pero itong katotohanan na to, mahalaga dahil yan yung nakaka-apekto. Diba? Kaya, kung na-apekto yung anak natin, parang isipin niya, gusto niya mayaman yung mapangasawa niya. Para hindi na siya nabubuli. Kasi mahirap lang sila. You see? So, nagkaka-apekto sa choice niya. Kahit gusto niya yung lalaki na kristyano, eh, ano ba trabaho ng... Ano ba trabaho niya? O, oh, di ba? Steward, sabi sa akin, na nasa US ako, ng negro, ganda ng kotse. Sabi ko, what's your work? I'm a steward. Nung kinikwento ko ng kay Steve, sabi ko, ganda ng kotse nung nag-treat sa akin. Ah, kasi ano, oh, steward daw siya. Tawa ng tao si Steve. Kasi ang steward sa isip ko, yun nasa aeroplano. Fly steward. Kami ni Steve, sa akin, steward sa US, janitor sa atin. Janitor siya, steward siya ng middle school. Hindi yung daanan natin. Eh, single yan, kaya may, 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 may pera talaga yan. Pero huwag mong isipin na super yama dahil steward ng airlines ng Amerika. You see, the way you think, the way na ano yung makukuha mo will affect so much. Kaya, dito ako nagsisimula sa lahat ng usapin with whatever kind of relationship we might be talking about. Kailangan klaro tayo pagdating sa bagay na yun. Sa special relationship to God's personhood. Lahat po are created in the image of God. Lalaki, babae, anuman ang estado niyan. Kailangan maitaguyod nating mabuti. Yan dahil sinisira yan ng lipunan natin. The New Testament also teaches us that man's being made in the image and likeness of God is fundamental in all of God's dealing with man. Babasahin ko po sa Tagalog. Una po, sa 1 Corinthians, makikita natin. Chapter 11, verse 7, ang ganitong pananalita ni Pablo. Sapagkat ang lalaki ay talagang hindi dapat magtalukbong ng kanyang ulo palibasa siya ay larawan at kaluwalhatian ng Diyos ngunit ang babae ay siyang kaluwalhatian ng lalaki. So binibigyang halaga ng Panginoon sa ibang kanyang mga katuruan ano man ang ibig sabihin ng talata na yan. Ang nais ko lang ipakita sa, sa ngayon is to show to you that man's being made in the image and likeness of God is fundamental in all of God's dealings with man. Fundamental yun. Ephesians 4. 21 to 24. Mababasa natin. Kung tunay na siya inyong narinig at tinuro ang sa kanya kung paanong ang katotohanan ay na kay Jesus, alisin ninyo ang dating paraan ng inyong pamumuhay, ang dating pagkatao na pinasama sa pamamagitan ng mapangdayang pagnanasa at magbago sa espiritu ng inyong pag-iisip. Yun po yung sinasabi. At kayo'y magbis ng bagong pagkatao. Ano yung pagkatao? Na yun, di ba? Na nilalang ayon sa wangis ng Diyos. E itong tinasabing nilalang bagong pagkatao, di ba? Siya ay nilalang sa katuwiran at kabanalan ng katotohanan. 
So when God begins to relate Himself and what He is doing, ginagamit niya yun. Napakalaga sa ating Diyos yung mga bagay na yun. In Colossians chapter 3, beginning verse or 3 verse 10 at kayo'y magbihis na ng bagong pagkatao na bignago sa kaalaman ayon sa larawan na lumalang sa kanya whatever those verses mean kinapakita ko lang sa inyo yung fundamental teaching that Man being created in the image and likeness of God is fundamental in all of God's dealing with man. In James chapter 3, verse 9, Sa pamamagitan nito ay pinupuri natin ang Panginoon at Ama at sa pamamagitan nito ay nilalait natin ang taong ginawa ayon sa larawan ng Diyos. Yung paglait natin, hindi lang sinasabi sa tao, larawan ng Diyos. Ito'y paglait. Bakit tayo pinagsasabihin ng Diyos ng ganun? There is something that you and I should not forget. Tayo'y nilalang lahat ng Diyos. Sa anumang pakikitungo mo sa, Diyo, sa sa tao, kapwa mo tao, remember how God looks at man. How God relates with man. Kaya ito yun, the fundamental dealing of God with man is rooted upon His being made in the image and likeness of God. So ano yung practical implikasyon nun? Di ba ang isang blessing na magpapalakas sa atin is that kung titignan mo at susuriin mong mabuti, God did not need to create man. Yet, He created us. Kailangan ba ng Diyos ng man? Hindi. And yet, He decided to create us. And He created us for His own glory. And this is confirmed both in the Old Testament and the New Testament. Therefore, we are to do all to the glory of God. We were created to glorify God, indicating that we are important to God Himself. Ganun kahalaga tayo. We are meant, kaya nga, ito yung encouragement mo, pag na-encounter mo, kung ang kalooban ng Diyos para sa iyo ay single ka sa providensya ng Diyos nakikita mo na 'di ba this helps you that when God created you napakalaga na maunawaan mo we are created and that is our place to do all to the glory of God to glorify him indicating how important kung single ka, how important your singleness is to God because God is the one who created you and God is the one who placed you in that singleness for what purpose? To glorify Him. Eh kaso sinasabi ka, habag-habag ka naman. No? Parang nakalimutan ka ng Diyo. No? So, nasa danger zone ka na. That's the first time I heard Uh, something like that. Ito lang week na to. Somebody posted. Naniniwala ba kayo kayong mga single? Kaya tawag ka na. Danger zone na ba yan? We laugh at that but it can be a real struggle sa buhay. Pero ito may mga implikasyon to sa atin kung nananatili. Yung pag-create sa atin ng Diyos one day kung ano magiging epekto ng kasalanan sa buhay natin nito, sa tatakboy ng buhay natin, alam lahat ng Diyos yan. And God has already designed it in order we can glorify Him. Because that is how much God 
cares for us. Lalong-lalo na kung kristyano ka at mananampalataya ka. Hindi mo dapat katakutan ang barclay na yan. This fact guarantees that our lives are significant. Di ba? Kasi nandun ka sa kalaoban ng Diyos to glorify Him. So, that is the significance of your life because our life is given to us not for ourselves, but for Him who died for us. Does all married couple, even Christians, able to glorify God? Hindi nga eh. Uso-uso nga yung divorce eh. Even among Christians. One of the highest divorce in the world comes from Christians. Not from pagans. Because pagans don't marry. They just live together. And so who are divorcing? Those who believe in marriage. Eh, but sila mag-divorce? Because marriage is meant to make one happy. Kung hindi ka na happy, may karapatan ka naman na maging happy. Yan ang sabi ng mundo. Kung hindi ka na happy, eh kaysa magsama kayo na isang taong taong pa, papano kung mahababuhay nyo sa kamay ng Panginoon, hindi na kayo happy? Wala ka bang karapatan maging happy? Oh, papa, eh, papano ka ba mabubuhay kung hindi ka happy? Mag- maghiwalay kayo, maghanap kayo ng iba. You see, because yun na yung buhay nila. Eh. Very shallow. Diba? Hindi marunot yung buhay nila eh. Lipat lang lipat. No? Mahal na mahal kita. After another month na busted, mahal naman kita. Iba naman ang minamahal. Ganun mo ang mahal. Pag na busted ka, hindi na kita love. May iba na akong love. Oh. Is that what love is? Oh. But, even mga Kristiyano, pumapasok yung ganun. Kaya nga napakahalaga na maunawaan natin. Ito yung nag-guarantee that our lives are significant. Diba, you were created in the image of God. Alam niyo kung anong ibig sabihin ng God You have God-like capacities. But, bakit ka binigyan ng God-like capacities, capacities to glorify Him? So, in whatever state, finally, you end up yourself. That capacity remains. It's God-given. No one can take it away from you simply because I have no wife, or I have no children, or I have just this kind of job. No! Hindi. Hindi nakasalalay doon. When we realize that God created us to glorify Him, and when we start to act in, in ways that fulfill that purpose, then we begin to experience a different kind of joy in the Lord that we have never known before. No, it's not in getting married. It's in knowing how you can glorify the Lord and in actually executing it. Even if you get married, you may be the most frustrated woman because your partner doesn't want to glorify the, the Lord. You want to live the rest of your Christian life here on earth. You are one with someone And yet, you are not one in the Lord. Why would you get married with an unbeliever? Eh, kasi mas mabait pa yung unbeliever sa believer. Mas maasahan pa daw yung... You see, iba na yung values mo eh. Iba na yung tinitignan mo. Pero kung nakatuon ka why God created you in His very image, and it is to glorify Him. Why would I marry someone who will not and have no uh, intention of glorifying God. True joy 
comes with that knowledge. Kahit Kristiyano kayo. Pag hindi kayo maging maingat, Christian-Christian lang yung ng pangasawa niyo. I admit, we had I we had had members na akala nila Kristiyano yung ano, mate ng Bible study. So eh, basta Christian okay na. Hmm. Kasi nasa danger zone. Nung panahon namin, baka maiwan na ng trend. <laughs> Iba yung trend, mababiyan. Hanggang <laughs> makabalik. Pagbalik niya, 60 ka na. <laughs> Ayaw mong maiwan. Sakay ka. Ay sumakay ka na kahit sino yung nakasakay dyan. And that is the kind of mentality. Na, kasi, pag isinantabi mo yan, may practical implications siya. Paano nagiging inexpressible and filled with joy ang mga believers? Sabi ni Wayne Gruden, when we add to that the realization that God Himself is rejoicing in our fellowship with Him, our joy becomes inexpressible and filled with heavenly glory. Pag ka na-realize mo na God Himself is rejoicing because you are satisfied with the kind of fellowship that you have with Him. Whether with a wife, with a husband, or without them. Whether with a high career or low career in the eyes of men. Whether poor or rich. Yun po yung implication. But secondly, a special relationship existing in humanity. Remember that. In Genesis 1 to 27, dapat maging malinaw pa, this is under attack. That when God created human beings, He created them what? Male and female. Wag po tayong susuko dyan, mga parents, sa mga anak natin, sa kultura ng bansa natin. Because maleness and femaleness is the basic, so, so basic to humanity. That is what humanity is. Yun ang sinasabi ng Diyos. This duality is a vital part of being such that each one is incomplete without the other. And both stand on equal footing before God. Both are made in the image and likeness of God. From this verse and those in chapters 128 of Genesis and chapter 2, 18 to 25, it is clear that humans are made for relationship to complement each other in love. Kung naalala nyo, God created a providential situation for Adam to discover his need. Hinintay ng Diyos na si Adam mismo madiscover niya yung need niya. And so God made Eve. When Adam finally discovered his need, God made Eve from Adam's body so that she would have an undeniable sense of dependency toward Adam, though she was a distinct person herself. Nung ginawa yun, nung just pati di na lang doon, merong goal ng Panginoon. Ano yung goal ng Panginoon? To make Eve realize the undeniable sense of dependency toward Adam. Kahit na distinct person siya, Herself. And when God brought Eve to Adam, He knew Eve was His what? Equal. My wife is equal with me. Bakit mo nasabi yan? Pas, when God presented my wife to me, He presented something or someone who is equal to me. She is made in the image of God.
And the Bible says Adam had a sense of affection for her and a sense of responsibility toward her. Because God made Adam and Eve in such a way that they would share love and communication and mutual giving of honor to one another in their interpersonal relationship. Hindi pinili po ng Diyos na lalaki sa lalaki, babae sa babae. E di sana lalaki na lang binigay niya kay Adam. Hindi. Hindi lang naman ang issue. E eh, isolated si Adam. E eh, kung ako yun, Lord, lalaki rin bigay mo sa akin. E eh, bibigyan mo pa ako ng responsibilidad. E eh, ikaw ka-equal ko na. Pero kami responsible sa garden. Lahat ng ano. Pantay lang kami. Pero si Adam... Tinanggap niya kagad yung difference na yun. Hiyak na hali. Yung responsibility na yun in what is so-called interpersonal unity. And this unity, sinasabi lang ng Bible, comes into its fullest expression in marriage relationship. Kaya makikita mo, one of the most enjoyable relationship as a single is to be healthy related to an opposite sex. Diba? Ang joyful it is. Pag puro tayo lalaki, lalakad tayo. Parang tingnan tayo. Puro lalaki tayo. Parang, ano ba? Ewan ko. No? Kung kayo nasisiyan, eh, tanongin nyo itong tatlo na sa harap. <laughs> May asawa na po ako eh. Hindi ko na yun ma-imagine eh. Diba? Pero I know. And when kayo dito sa church, diba? How good it is to talk to talk to our sisters in the Lord. Very joyful. Why? You don't have anything because it's all again. Marriage is merely the most parang pinaka uh, matindi na expression ng interpersonal unity. Pero hindi ibig sabihin, kaya nga, love and the one another principle in the Bible is for all Christians. Hindi segregated po. Women should care for one another, women should love for one another, and the men will no. It's open for all. There is a kind of interpersonal unity that God designed in our relationship. Marriage is its fullest expression. Kaya nga, it is at this point itinuro sa atin yung ordinance of marriage. At makikita nyo, medyo kakaiba yun. In chapter 2 verse 24, Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. So, pag abutin mo yung marriage, mag There is a one flesh taking place, pero dito sa interpersonal relationship natin, with women, with men, hindi yun nangyayari. There is no oneness that will ever take place. Kaya nga hindi pwede mag-asawa, lalaki sa lalaki, at babae sa babae. There is something that will never be realized no matter what they do. Because this is interpersonal. The ori- original design is this. A man, malinaw yon. a man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife. And they shall become one flesh. Two men never become one flesh through marriage. This is one of the mystery of marriage. Then God blessed them and God said to them, Be fruitful and multiply. Fill the earth and subdue it. Can he tell it? Pwede bang idugtong yon sa marriage? Ng dalawang lalaki? 
ang dalawang babae. Hindi. Though the Bible is not a handbook of courtship and marriage, there is a right order. Ano yung right order? First comes love. A selfish commitment to care for another person. Kayo mga lalaki, ang commitment na gagawin nyo habang nagpe-pray kayo at naghahanap kayo ng kapartner is first of all to be able to come to that point that you are willing to have a selfless commitment to care for another person. Hindi yung hinahanap nyo yung who would care for you, who would love you, who would make your, your life so colorful. How bad to it. <laughs> the Christians know it is a self-commitment that you make Lord I am now ready to make that selfish commitment o eh kung wala ka pang trabaho how can you make a selfless commitment hindi mo naman pwede i-commit yung tatay mo I commit to you yung sweldo ng tatay ko yung kayamanan ng tatay ko yung bahay ng tatay ko Yung mamanahin ko, oh, you're not ready. The readiness is to be able to make that selfless commitment. Diba? Hindi yung pupunta ka doon sa liligawa mo eh. Kakakasala lang kita kung, kung willing kang pirmahan tong kontrata na to. Ano ba na dyan? Na lahat ng pagkaari ko ngayon, hindi magiging pagkaari mo kahit kailanman. Hanggang mamatay tayong dalawa. Oh. Diba? Mapipirmahin ka sa ganun. Kasi mahal na mahal ka niya. <laughs> Kakalukuan niya, tatay. <laughs> Oo. Oh, Matatawa kayo. Di ba? But Christians, doon ka magsisimula. That's the first love. What is love? It is a selfless commitment. Marriage should begin with love. Kasi in the end, you will be commanded to love your wife. To love your husband. Oh. Eh, what is love? Commitment to care for another person. You are there to care for that person. Eh, kung pareho kayo, di ba? He made that commitment. She made that commitment. Di ang ganda ng simula ng marriage. Eh, kung yung isa, Hindi. Nasa isip niya lang, pinili ko, kala ko kasi he will care for me. So, puro expectation. Saan katerbang expectation? Hindi kayang mamit na lalaki. Kasi yung expectation ng lalaki, tinanggap siya dahil kung sino siya. O, oh, yung gulo na dun. Nagsisimula yung marriage, ang gulo na. Kala ko kasi, tinanggap na ako kung sino ako. Di ba? Magulo sa buhay, burara sa buhay, lahat na nang ano. Letter B sa buhay. Ang dami letter B, baka kala nyo. O, oh, di ba? Ganun po mangyayari, to be frank with you. But the order in scripture is you begin with love. You know why? Because love is a selfless act. Kaya nga, pag binasa mo yung mga verses, love as Christ loved the church. How did Christ love the church? It was a selfless act. Yung church, barumbado eh. Yung church, matigas ang ulo eh. Kaya bibigay ko yung buhay mo, di ba ganyan ang complain ng mag-isawa? Paano ba ako, pastor, magpasakap sa asbad ko, ang tigas ng ulo. Oh, you see? Eh, ano, hindi siya sensitive sa needs ko. Wala nang inisip, kundi yung needs niya. Pakakala niyo, hindi totoo yan. nag invento lang ako. Eh, isa kayo sa kong mausap sa akin, di ba? <laughs> <laughs> oh. But uh, you get the point. That's why it all begins there. Pag kinonet mo kay Christ, yun pa rin ang aabutin mo. Pareho pa rin. Yung model ni Christ. Kaya nga ang kuman sa atin, love. Diba? When you say, ano yung pinag-uusap sa, sacrificial yung love niya. Ay, anong kasunod nun? Then, then and only then comes marriage. Diba? Anong nangyayari sa marriage na yan? 
yung selfless commitment mo to care for that person, you are now making in publicly in front of God. Hindi lang doon sa babae. Kaya nga tayo iniiba ta, may witness pa, pumipirma eh. Kung sure ka na, you offer marriage. Covenant kasi yan, unbroken. Diba? Yung covenant sa akin, ha, intindi nyo, a solemn vow made before God. That's my definition of covenant. Kasi yung covenant, makakontract yan, sabi ni Pastor George. Pwede yung renewable. Uh, ano lang, mabisa sa loob ng sampung taon. Pagkatapos ng sampung taon, hindi na mabisa. Many of you know, that's the way I define a covenant in Scripture. A solemn vow, either made by God or a pagsatao sa isang Kristiyano, a solemn vow he is making before God. In marriage, I am making a solemn vow before God in the presence of these witnesses. That I made this solemn vow to love my wife as Christ loved the church. So, ano yun? You are now making a public confession of what you already made as a commitment, a selfless commitment to care for another person. Kaya nga tayo, hanggang ngayon, kinikare tayo ng Panginoon kahit na ipinoffer niya na yung buhay sa atin, tapos pawardi-wardi tayo, minsan nababastos natin ang ating Panginoon. Hindi naman siya nakikipag-divorce sa atin. Nag-offer pa siya ng hiwalayan sa atin. O sasabihin niya, hindi naman ako love ni Pastor Joey. Eh bakit ko siya i-bless? Bakit ko siya bibigyan ng ganito? Kaya na God, sabi ng God, I hate divorce. Because you're very, very selfish. Ha? Asa na yung selfless commitment mo? Hindi yun magbabago. Kaya nga, doon ka nagsisimula before God. You think about, I will have to love this woman as Christ loved the church. And what is love? A selfless. Commitment to care for another person until you die. Until death separates me from that. Kahit gusto kong gawin, eh yung iba nga tuloy-tuloy na eh. Ayaw na nila mag-asawa ulit. Sabi niya, binuhos ko na niya sa kanya lahat. Kaya ako hindi po ako, nabuhos ko na lahat, wala na ako may ibibigay sa iba. Mali bang compute? <laughs> diba? May mga ganun tao, hindi na talaga. Eh, bata ka pa naman ah. Kahit encourage ng pastor. Ba tayo mo na? Pastor, hindi yun talaga yung commitment ko. Ay, ay sa sasabi ng pastor, kasi kung mo lang kalimutan, wag kang aasa sa heaven kasi wala yang mere. Baka hindi ka kilala mo. So, masaya, malungkot pero mabigat. Parang light pero hindi. Para sa isang Kristiyano. 'Di ba? Both partners, anong nangyayari? Kunyari, they promise undying love. And so we pray that they would end. How do you pray for newlywed? Ako doon sa langit. Kaya ako, pag, kahit sino, sigurado ka na ba yan? Yan, kaya sabi ko, sigurado, sigurado ka. Dahil pag pumasok ka dyan, hindi ka na makakalabas. I don't hold to divorce and remarry. Kung mag-divorce ka, you cannot remarry hanggang hindi mo patayin yung napangasawa mo. <laughs> Only death can separate you. Mahari physically, mag-separate kayo. Hindi. So, yun ang sunod, marriage. That undying love, you made before God. Kaya ako, pinakama, pinakamalapit sa akin na kanta yung, siguro alam nung iba yung, ah, uh, yung God has enabled me to walk with you. Parang gano'n, di ba? May lumang kanta na hanggang ngayon, yun pa rin yung inaawit ko when it comes to marriage. 
yung I'll cherish siguro yung mga kasing edad ko dyan alam yun because it expresses something that is far more deeper na pinagpe-pray mo na manatili sa'yo and then after that no doon na pumapasok yung rule ng sex sex is meant to cement the marriage after it is cemented sa covenant no parang may covenant between God and man nung unang panahon yun pag tinuli shield yung covenant no? sa 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 wife and husband yan and last kung biyayaan ng Panginoon you have a baby depending on the will and providence of God So dito, makikita na natin that marriage remains to be heterosexual between male and female, monogamous to becoming one flesh and it is to be pure and holy. Diyan lumalabas yun. Because, why is it pure and holy? Kung sinunod mo yung pattern na yun, it remains to be pure and holy. Love Can you say, can you make that? Huwag lang yung love, define mo. Selfless commitment to someone else. Are you ready? Sa expression mo. Kaya eh ako sasabihin ko, hindi ka ready. Number one, wala ka naman hanap buhay. Diba? Yung selfless love mo, maganda sana. Pero, ang selfless love, hindi imagination sa Bible. Kasi you will be the provider. Doon pa lang. Tapos, do you have uh, the, the kind of maturity to make a commitment? Diba? Ay, kung 16 years old, commitment. Eh, kaya nga siya magkakasal, tigas na mula, ay mag-commit doon sa parents niya. Mag-commit pa doon sa hindi niya kaano-ano. Hindi siya mature enough for that. Even our Lord is now beginning to recognize yan, tinataasa na nila. Kaya nga may parental consent pa eh. Oh. So you see, maraming ibig sabihin noon dyan. Love, marriage, sex, and baby. That is the sequence in the Bible. And for those who are already married, it serves as a reminder that love is the foundation of marriage. Have you been thinking about that? Tapos na ako doon, pastor, nandun na ako sa baby. Di ba? Maraming ganun. When they had a baby, they made the center of their marriage on their children. And marriage is not pleasing to God. The f- love should remain. It should grow. Kasi yun yung model ni Christ sa atin. Love is there. Kaya nga, di ba sabi ni Paul, the greatest is that love sa buhay natin. So, it serves as a reminder Where is our love for our partner? Every time you celebrate your anniversary, renewing wedding vows, sharing the joys and trials of being together for many, many years, don't forget, where are you in that love relationship with each other? Because the love of Christ for the church never wins. Never. You get all there, you are of no use na sa kingdom ng Lord kasi buugod-ugod ka na. You still love God's love for you. Just keep on becoming strong. Because Jesus Christ knows you need it in your old days. 
Never wait. How about you and me? Sabi natin na uh, magsa-celebrate na ako na 35th year married to my wife. We are thankful to the Lord. We remain to be married. But how is it before God? How pleased is the Lord when it comes to loving your wife as Christ loved the church? Eh baka hindi na nga natin naintindi dahil nga nagpalaki tayo ng anak at nakalimutan natin. Diba? So to us who are married, there are many ways to strengthen our marriage. Think of that. Yung sinasabi natin sa husband sacrificing for his wife. May age limitation ba yun? Wala. Yung serving your husband, may limitation ba yun? Helping your husband become the man that he should be before God. May limitation ba yan? Yung sacrificing for your wife. Yan, paano kung yung wife mo, kunyari, di ba? Yung dati nating pastor, talagang bawa ko sa kanya. Di ba? Yung asawa niya, suddenly, hindi ko alam kung anong tawag doon, dementia ba yung wala na. Pero, mahal na mahal niya. Pinagliling ko rin niya. Kahit may iwan niya lahat. Kaya kita ko yun, ka-fellowship ko siya. Maraming man kami yung pagkakaiba sa theology. Ang prayer ko sa Lord, kung magkakanin yung asawa ko, mag-anap ako ng caregiver. <laughs> ako yung magiging caregiver. Yung pagmamahal mo. Ganyan ko siya biruin. Eh. <laughs> Kaganyan ako mag-anap ako. <laughs> Lahat ng inipon mo, kagastasin ko sa caregiver. <laughs> But it's a reality. We do not know what we're going to think. Pero yung mga hindi na grow doon, it, they will find it a big burden. Katotoo lang. You may even wish na kunin na siya ng Lord. Paano kung yun ang kalooban ng Lord? And you did not culture and develop that love. Tsaka partner mo. I would like to close sa marriage lang, no? And then Proverbs 5:15 to 20. What is the plan of God for marriage, for husband and wife? Mark this in your Bible, you husbands and wives, hanggang mamatay kayo, evaluate nyo yung sarili ninyo sa bagay na yan. Proverbs Five. Alam nyo naman yan. Pinapaalala ko lang. 15 to 20. Proverbs 5. Sa iyong sariling tipunan ng tubig, ikaw ay uminom. Sa umaagos na tubig mula sa iyong sariling balon. Dapat bang kumalat ang iyong mga bukal at ang mga agos ng tubig sa mga lansangan? Dapat ba? So, tanongin mo yung sarili mo. ba? Hayaan mong maging para sa sarili mo lamang at hindi para sa mga kasama mong mga dayuhan. Pagpalain ang iyong bukal at magalak ka sa asawa ng iyong kabataan. Gaya ng magandang usa at manginghing babaeng usa, bigyan kang kasiyahan ng dibdib niya sa tuwina at sa kanyang pag-ibig ay laging malugod ka. Sapagkat, bakit anak ko sa mapangalun niyang babae ay malulugod ka at yayakap ka sa dibdib ng babaeng banyaga? Sapagkat ang mga lakad ng tao ay nasa harap ng mga mata ng Panginoon at kanyang sinisiyasat ang lahat niyang mga landa. Diba? God requires husbands and wives to become good lovers until the end of their life. Kaya nga, pag wala na yung anak nyo, hindi nyo na-build up yung isa't isa sa inyo, mag-struggle kayo sa isa't isa. So you have to work it out. 
and for single women and men in our church, the biblical pattern for courtship and marriage clearly shows where you have to begin. Begin well if you want to end well. How do you begin? Love. Can you truly offer that kind of love, service and sacrifice fully, without any condition? Secondly, purity. Are you ready to maintain that purity? Or do you want to have a partner because you are impure? Hindi mo sisirain mo pa ibang tao sa impurity mo. You must be pure himself. And maybe that's the only time you'll get married. And the third and the last, siguro pag ikakasal na kayo, a special relationship to Christ and the church. Tatlo yung relationship na yun. Yung ba yung sa efficient, loving, yung marriage mo has a special relationship to Christ. And it's true. You are to model it. You have to love your wife as Christ loved the church. You have to love your husband by submitting to your husband no? as the church submits to the husband. Napakalaga nun sa marriage because it is only in the establishment of the new covenant na lumabas na malinaw na ang isang aspeto ng marriage sa kalooban ng Diyos has a direct relationship that you have with Christ and His Church. And that is for some time. But I hope itong basic na ito, pangahawakan nyo na may bit. No? Kasi ginigiba na ngayon yan. Kung sino tayo, sino yung babae na yan, sino yung lalaki na yan, Sino yung mga taong you relate to? All of them are very special and unique to God. And God treats them uniquely. Kaya nga, the way we have been saved, the way we came to know the Lord Jesus Christ is very different. Though in many ways very similar. But God has dealt with us personally. And secondly, don't ever forget yung real humanity natin. Hindi yan mababago. The maleness and femaleness. And how much God, in many portions of relating to that which He created in His own image, thinks and always places the ranges, the implication of maleness and femaleness. You should not be ashamed. Don't even dream to become a male. Sana naging lalaki ako. Sana naging babae ako. No. That is a sinful desire and long. Because it is exactly who you are as God created you. That God wants you to glorify Him. No? Ganda nun, di ba? Kung sino ako, at ano ako ngayon? Ang gusto ng Lord, isa lang para sa ating lahat. Kung mahirap ako, gusto niya i-glorify ko siya bilang isang mahirap na tao sa mundo na ito. Kung mayaman ako, gusto ng Lord i-glorify ko siya na mayaman ako. Kung single ako, i-glorify ko yung Panginoon as a single. And I'm happy for being single. I will never regret being single or being married. Because it is from God. Pero kung naging irresponsible ka, hindi mo alam ang direction mo. 
talagang ang magsisisi ka. But not because of what God did to you and where God placed you. It is because you have never learned or you have never accepted fully what God decided in His sovereignty that is best for you to glorify Him. This is the best place that God has chosen that I should glorify Him. You work in the marketplace, I work in this church. And may God transform us to that kind of person that He wanted us to be. And that as we look at each other, we look in the way that God is so pleased looking at our brothers and sisters. Diba? Pinakit with joy na, for what He has made you. Ako as a pastor, with that joy na, to serve you for who you are. The differences we have. No? But all should be toward His glory. And may God give us that strong desire and acceptance that this is indeed our destiny and this is indeed the greatest joy that we could ever have while living in this world. We thank you, Father, for reminding us all of these things. We have known them long ago, but still it is refreshing and we acknowledge, Lord, we needed it. Continually establish us well in this area. We pray for the newly married members of our church, Josh and Eliza, Joel and Charlie. And how we pray, Father, that the joy that we have for them in sovereignly choosing that they get married with the very person that they are with, May it be, Father, that they will discover the joy that you have for them. Help them and enable them to live their married life for your honor and for your glory. With all of the testings, the difficulties, the trials that their relations might have. May all those, Lord, be used to strengthen them and to mature them that one day it will be very very clear to many and even to this more world in which they will be that their love for one another is rooted in your love for them and even for us who have been married for quite a long time, help us too, Lord, to remember your goal for us, as clearly stated in Proverbs 5. And for our singles, Lord, help them and guide them whether the best place to glorify your name is being single or the best place is to discern that it is in marriage that you can best that they can best glorify your most holy name. We commit them to you, Father, and help them remember that you have set the process. Help them, Lord, to begin well so that they can expect to end well in the relationship they might one day desire to have in their own life. But if not, Father, help them to see the same blessedness, the same joy that they can have as a single man or a single woman. The best place to where they can glorify you and your son. 
the Lord Jesus. Hear us, we pray. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen.